Hi, this is going to be a relatively short video, hopefully about our planning process. And when we say planning, this is planning for the timeline. And you, you will be able to see a link to a Google Calendar on the website. So there's going to be two videos, this one and one more. In the second video, we are going to walk through all the items we have put in the calendar. Um, so this is all the activity which will have to be undertaken from now through 2018, 2019. Um, and this video just talks about the thought process um, that we used for coming up with that plan. Yeah. So really the, the first thing we did was um, really in no order. We just had a, I suppose you'd call it a kind of brainstorm. We just had a, we just emptied out everything we thought that would have to be done you know, everything from designing this to designing the roof to thinking about materials, buying materials, ordering stuff, just everything that could from start to finish that at some point yeah. in the process would have to happen. You know, yeah. it, it was, and you know, we knew that eventually we got down to a huge list of things that all had to happen that if they all got done and happened, then the house would be built at the end of it. But you know, they were all just a big jumble of thoughts really that were down there. And some were critical others were you might say aesthetic or less important but everything was down there so that we, we really could understand all the little subtasks because each one of these would have a whole little flurry of activities around it so it wasn't to go to the very tiny macro level but really just to capture the, the key parts and, and that'll come up in the, in the other videos yeah. as, as Grisha was saying but and, and so that's where we started and then we started to pull these into order and look at look at dependencies on these you know which one which had happened in sequence which had happened when you're on the land and doing it which one could you do anywhere you know at home or whatever in the library um, and and which ones involved going around other places like stores or other people's place to buy things and and craigslist and and these kind of things yeah and then or the dump there, to get a, knowledge. There was a, a fourth category. Um, mm. The fourth one is where we have meetings. So, meetings, yeah. Um, so it could be anywhere where we are calling the septic guy to give us an yeah. estimate or the planning guys where we'll have, you know, pre-submission meetings. Hmm. Um, it needs a third party involved. Yeah, yeah third party and where it's a, there is an exact time yeah. and we cannot miss and it. And it might also be a, a midweek time, so it's not necessarily at our convenience, whereas yeah. you could argue a lot of the other things were at our convenience. So we, we split things up all, all that way, we categorised them, and then started to pull them into, into order. So we started grouping things together where well, all of these things are to do with designing and building the house all of these things are to do with planting some trees all these etc yeah. just really started doing all that and now now if you look at each of the items it doesn't go into details like this task has to be done on 10th october there's very few things the settlement has to be done on 7th october we can't get around that but with the exception of a few things like that um, it is not down to that level. It's roughly, you know, we'll work on the solar panel, solar system design on these two weeks. So it's at that macro level. And um, what that gives us is the flexibility, because like I said, we both have daytime jobs. And the way we are assuming we'll have time available is only on weekends. So right now we are doing a rush of videos just to get the blog going and running. But after that, we are hoping to be fairly disciplined about only doing work on weekends, potentially mm -hmm. long weekends or maybe two weeks of vacation in the summers. Um, but um, so that's the level at which we are um, documenting this. Now, there is different reasons, of course, planning helps, but a bunch of reasons we can think off the top of our head why planning like this helps is it's a fairly complex project and you think you will remember things, but mm. when you have so many other things going on, you will forget unless you put it down. So, um, that's one. Two, like Alan said, there can be dependencies. Now, I can't wake up next summer in May and go, oh, this is a time to plant fruit trees. 
guess what? If you don't order some of them in October, you're not going to have them. Mm. And, and if you haven't got a well, you can't water them. If you haven't got power, power you can't run the yeah. well. It's, there's a whole, a whole f host of interconnected things yes. that have to happen just to turn a tap on. So, yeah. yeah, and certain things can only be done um, when you are on the land. The certain things can only be done in summer. Uh, certain things can only be done in winter. For example, when the leaves have fallen and you can walk through and the brambles have died, it's easier to pull out stones and, uh, mm. uh, you know, tree trunks. So it's not always the case that summer is easier to work with. And as we put the plans out, fortunately, we realized that the next three summers we are going to have a lot of work. So we know that we have to try and plan and get vacation or long weekends, use up our vacation as long weekends during the summers mm. to get this job done. So that's, you know, all the items for which planning helps. Yeah, and also where there are third party dependencies, you know, if you know that at some point you're going to need a, a guy to dig a well, you know, so it's good to start thinking, well, well, we're, we're going to put a well down in November, say, then you don't wait till November until you contact the guy, you, you do that. Mm. So again, there's a whole sub-process there of n knowing that you want this thing dug on a certain date, then you work back from that and say, well, you talk to him then, you schedule him then, you get your money ready then, you you know. Yeah. And he then has other dependents. He says, well, to dig a well, I need the land cleared. I need this, I need that. And, yeah, I have a lead time. I and, need and two whole, weeks from now. And, and so that's all... Yeah, and depending on where you are, if the ground freezes over, um, they might not be able to dig both for septic and well in certain months. Same thing for digging down for your trees. Um, uh, for, for us, fortunately, it doesn't happen where we are. Uh, the guys have said they can dig year-round. But if there is snow, you know, it's going to make yeah. their work just... difficult. So you have to plan these and allow for errors. Mm -hmm. um, so um, each of our items is not an entry for a particular day, um, with a few mm -hmm. exceptions. It's generally entries which span two weeks so that's the time slot over which we have to finish something and um, the other thing you talked about um, about we have categorized the work work which we do on the land work like planning thinking design looking up youtube videos how to reading books which is done at home mm -hmm. running around where we are getting buying material you know, using Craigslist to search, going to the dump to pick up mulch. Um, and the fourth is when we have meetings with someone, whether it's in the land or home. So trainings, meeting with the planning guy, mm -hmm. getting the septic person to the land, all that is meetings. And we have color coded it. So red is meetings for obvious reasons. Anything in red, you can't miss. Green is the easiest. That's the stuff of reading, thinking. Mm -hmm. So you can sit at home, sit anywhere, honestly, and do it. Uh, blue is where the running, um, sorry, blue is the running around stuff and orange is um, work which is done on the land. On the land. Yeah, so the, and, and the other thing I found useful doing it was just to, it gives you an overall perspective of the amount of work you're doing at different times of the year and overall what how much is involved because when you look at it, sometimes you look at it superficially and think, Oh, it's not that hard. You know, there, there's not, it's not that difficult to do this. We've got time if we want to. Hey, let's build this little thing here, or add additional into that, or whatever. And you suddenly realise that you you haven't got hope in, in whatever of doing that because that month you're thinking I could build a, you know, a hammock or whatever. You know, that, that that's the month that you're doing. You're meeting this guy. You're doing that. You're doing this, and suddenly you've burnt six weekends out of four, you know, and there is just no time in that part to do it. So it, it gives you a very good reality check of what's actually involved in this and what you absolutely can't mess about with and, and delay because that's just going to push the whole end date right out. So it's a good perspective yeah. set. And some things, if you look at it, it might look like we have provided for too much time or uh, some very little, but... Um, Again, it's just a marker so we can keep ourselves in check and we go, don't forget or lose track of things. Mm. Um, so if we start really slipping and we, you know, months pass and we're not hitting deadlines, we know we are slipping. So we have to be aware 
that we'll have to change our plans. So certain things like building the cob wall can't be started in August because we need to give summer for it to dry. Mm. Um, in which case they could trigger major revisions. Um, on the other hand, we are not going to say we gave two weeks for solar panel design and we finish it in one weekend, say, um, great. So we, the plan is not to stop, then is to go and attack some other of the design or planning, mm. uh, which, you know, we can, we can always yeah. do. So it will not be, it won't be that clear cut, but this is more to make sure we don't miss anything. It doesn't yeah. mean we won't touch anything else. Because there are some, uh, you know, you know, we're not a, I'd say in a huge rush to build this, but there are some things that have got impact if they're done late. So if you can see that all these early tasks are taking much longer than we ever thought for whatever reason, and they're all pushing out, then you definitely don't want to complete something like, let's say, do your final planning application, which has got a cost associated with it. And as soon as that's approved, there's a ticking clock that says, you know, that this is not going to happen. If you're then going to be sitting for another six months before you can even start acting on this planning thing that you've bought, paid for, and you've now only got six months left of it. You want to get the most out of that time, so you then say, well, I'll delay that task until these other things yeah. have caught up, and then you, until you hit the time of year that's right to submit yeah. it. And you may lose 12 months quite easily yeah. just because of that. And yeah. So it's to, it makes sure you don't suddenly, blindly almost launch into finishing off one task in your plan yeah. knowing that all the other ones behind it are also are stacked up and you're just going to waste time and money yeah. and stress and just because it's and just because you don't have all the information um, to gauge exactly how much time you would need um, doesn't mean you shouldn't plan um, that would change we don't have all the information but you still need to put a plan down uh, the same uh, goes for um, the budget uh, we have done and provided some things um, we have already seen. Luckily, we have been, looks like we might go under budget, but we are fully aware that tomorrow there'll be things where we will go over budget. So those things will balance out, but you still have to um, give yourself a rough timeline um, hmm. and a budget. So um, otherwise it's almost impossible to... Uh, do a project like this you can easily get derailed and you will um, not get stuff done and when you write things down you'll be surprised um, how much perspective it gives you you realize how much more complicated uh, things are yeah so it's a re really it's a, a vital I wouldn't do anything until you've done that plan yes because it's uh, it, it sets everything it sets your mind properly thinking because you could just almost I'm not saying randomly but you could start just throwing yourself and huge amounts of efforts and money going into any project but if yeah. there's no plan behind it you might as well just yeah not and, bother. and and some things you can do um, physical work uh, some things like building the cob wall is limited to the hot months but there are other things which are not limited to certain seasons so the other thing we are trying to do with planning is spread out the physical activity as much as we can because we know there are some months we are going to be doing a lot of physical work. So can we do certain things ahead of time or in certain other months? Um, so it helps in the distribution of load. And um, we try to put a balance between physical activity and design and thinking because Yes, we have to build in summer, but it's going to be really hot between 12 and 2. You know, temperatures reach three digits. So we'll be then relaxing and then maybe we can run out to the dump and get some mulch or pick up something from Craigslist or sit down and edit our videos or mm. design something. So it has to be a balance of mm. all the activities. Um, and uh, one other way of thinking of, of how you decide the timeline is certain things have to happen at this at a certain point so again when I come back to building the cob walls has to be done at this point which means you had better have finished digging the well and finishing the septic because you do, do not want all the equipment required 
for digging out a septic getting in the way of your construction. And before you start your septic and your house, you need to have your plans approved. And once the plans, the permit is approved, your one year clock starts ticking. So you don't want to finish it too far ahead of time. Um, we are going to do a little test house from which we will learn a few things. So the permit submission should be towards the end of that learning process. Yeah. Um, so um, some things you can work your way backwards from major items which have to be done at a particular point in time. Um, so we'll have another video where we'll literally walk through all the items in the calendar and hopefully between these two you'll have a good idea about the timeline and we'll have a short one on the budget and um, it'll teach you how to uh, budget, it'll teach you how to budget things, your budget doesn't have to be the same uh, but again it's the, the thought the process. To, the things to think about and how you keep it realistic, yeah. even when you don't know the, any of the details you've still got to you know, get something in. Okay?